In this video, we're going to work through an example of designing data definitions and functions operating with lists. So we'll design a data definition to represent arbitrary sized information, and then we'll design a function to operate with that data definition. So here we go, let's look at a problem. In your new job at Hogwarts, you've been assigned to keep track of the weights of all the owls in the owlery. You might wonder why wizards use computers so much, but it's because they're kind of like magic and they like them. So the first thing we have to do is design a data definition to represent the individual weights of all the owls. And we're going to assume that there are an arbitrary number of owls. So here the key phrase is there's an arbitrary number of owls. So right away, we want to think about using a self-referential data definition because we need to represent arbitrary size data we need a self-referential data definition. So let's start doing that. We need a name for it and let's call it weights. It'll be the weights of all the owls. And a self-referential data definition has two cases, at least two cases. So we're going to start with a one of and a well-formed self-referential a well-formed self-referential data definition has a base case in which there's no self-reference. So let's use lists and let's say that's empty. And it has at least one self-referential case. So this is going to be, we're using lists, so this is going to be a cons. And here we go. Now we have to decide how we're going to represent the individual weights. Well, the individual weights, I think we can just represent those as number. That'll be a simple way to do that. So we'll just say number here. And now we need to have the self-reference. We need to refer back to this very data definition itself. So we'll put weights here. And there, when we do it that way, we have the self-reference that we're after because inside of weights it refers back to itself. So that'll be a kind of self-reference and that will give us the arbitrary size. We can go around that self-reference cycle as many times as we want to have either an empty list of weights or a list with one weight or two weights or three weights or an arbitrary number of weights. Okay, the next step of the how to design data recipe is to do an interpretation. So here we go, interp, it's the individual weights. And when we've got numbers, it's always good to say what the unit is. So let's say in kilograms of an arbitrary number of vowels. Okay, that's an interpretation. Now the next step is to do examples. Now whenever you've got a list data definition, a good example to start with is empty. It's not a very interesting example, but it is an example of a weights. So we'll say the WS1. I'm calling it WS because it's sort of the plural of W. Um, is empty. And here's another example. We'll call it define WS2. And I happen to have looked up the average weight of a barn owl is about 0.4 kilograms. And the average weight of a snowy owl is about 2.1 kilograms. So there's another example of a weights. The next step is always the template. And to set up for templating, what I like to do is to say fun for weights, oops, weights, and I'll call the parameter ws, the plural of weights, and I'll put that there like that, and I'll also put template rules used, and if I say on my Mac command E on Windows, I think it's control E, it'll get Dr. Racket to close the interactions area, so I'll have a little bit more room to work. 
Okay, so to do the template, we always start at the word after is. It's a one of, so the first rule is going to be one of, and there are two cases. So that means I put a cond here with two cases. Okay, let's see. The first case is empty. That's atomic distinct empty. And the question is, is it empty? WS. And the answer is dot, dot, dot. I'm not taking the trouble right here to go look at the data definition uh, template rules used page. You can go do that at any time if I'm going too quickly. Just jump over to that page and check the rule I'm using. But here I use the atomic distinct rule to form the con question first and then the con answer. So let's see, that was the first case, which was empty. Now the second case is, what is this? Well, this is a compound, because cons is, cons is a compound. And it's the compound cons number weights. Now, it's a mixed data itemization in which there's only two cases. So I'm allowed to use else in this case for the question. I don't have to say cons question mark, I'll just use else. But now in order to form the answer, well let's see, it's a compound, so the rule is both selectors, or all the selectors, in this case there's only two. So I'll say first of WS is one selector, and rest of WS is the other selector, right? That's going to give me the first of the cons and the rest of the cons. And the rule for compound is first you go ahead and write the selectors, but then you leave a note for yourself saying what their type will be. Well, the first of WS is a number, because we're doing the first of a cons like this. So this is a number. And the rest is a weights. So now the compound rule wants me to consider what to do with those. So let's see. Well, number is atomic non-distinct because the first of first of WS is number. And so that makes me basically do nothing to this first. I'm not going to wrap anything else around it. And I can get rid of this note now. You could leave the note if you want, but I like to get rid of it. The rest of WS is a self-reference, right? Because weights is the very type we're working on. It's this self-reference. And I'll put the note to just be detailed. Rest of WS is weights. So the self-reference rule says that I wrap around that selector a natural recursion, or a note that there will be a natural recursion here, like that. And now that I'm done, I can get rid of these extra line breaks. We never leave extra breaks at the end in this programming language, so we, we, we don't want to see a program that has some parens dangling at the end like that. We like to bring them back up here. So there we go, that template seems done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run now, even though there's not much to run, this will at least tell me if my parens are balanced. And they seem to be. And the reason I'm getting this black here, of course, is this template never ran. To make that stop happening, I'll comment it out. So there we go, now we have the data definition we were asked to, um, we have the data definition we were asked to design we can represent the individual weights of an arbitrary number of owls. For example, this would be a list of the weights of, of no owls at all, and this is a list of the weights of two owls. So now let's go on to the next part of the problem, which I happen to have sitting in the file right here under me, which is design a function to compute the total weight of a list of owl weights. 
Okay, well the first step of the how to design function recipe is signature. So let's see, if we get a list of owl weights, that's going to be one of these. It's going to be a weights. And the total weight of a bunch of them is going to be what? Well, we're just going to add up a bunch of numbers, so that's going to be a number. So that's the signature. The purpose in this case is fairly straightforward. It's to produce total weight of a list of owl weights. And the stub will just be, what are we going to call this function? Let's call it total. And it'll consume some we weights. And zero seems like a good stub. It has to be a number. Zero is a number. So now I've got a stub. And I'll put a note here saying this is a stub. And I'll go ahead and run right now just to make sure I haven't messed something up. My parentheses are balanced. That's good. So signature, purpose, stub. The next thing I have to do is examples. Now there's a guideline when I'm writing a function that operates on arbitrary size data. The first example should always be the base case. So check, expect, total. The base case for this arbitrary size data definition is empty. Here it is. I go up to weights and the base case is empty. So that's the first example I'm going to use. I'm going to say total of empty. Well, what's the total of an empty list of weights? The total of an empty list of weights is zero. Okay. And there's another guideline that says if you're designing a function that operates on arbitrary size data, you should also have a, ch a test for a case where the list is at least too long. So that would be something like total cons 3, cons 12. These are some heavy owls. They're going to have a hard time getting off the ground. Um, empty. Well, what's the total of these two weights? Well, that's just 3 plus 12. We could put 15 here, or if we wanted to, we could put plus 3, 12 to make it more clear to ourselves that we're adding those up. So let's run this now, and let's see what's happening here. Well, the good thing that's happening is all of our tests seem to have run. None of them are black anymore. And of course, the second test failed because our stub, let's get so we can see our stub. Our stub produces zero. So in this second test case, let me highlight the second test case. In the second test case, you know, the stub produced zero instead of the expected result 15. We expected that. But the good thing is we know that all of our parentheses are balanced at least. And now we're getting pretty close to done, actually. Signature, purpose, stub, examples. The next thing we have to do is get the template. So we'll scroll up here to the template for weights. We'll copy it down here. We'll make a note that we took the template from weights. We'll paste it in here. We'll rename it to total. We'll be sure to rename the natural recursion. It's easy to forget to do that. We'll rename the natural recursion. And we'll comment out the stub. So now we have a template to work with. Basically, whenever we have a template, the next step is to try to fill in the dots using the purpose, the signature, and the examples to tell you what to do. Well, we know we have to produce a number, and it's the total weight of a list of owl weights. And the first example makes it clear that if the list is empty, the weight is zero. So this set of dots here is just going to become zero. Now, you may already know what to do here with this set of dots, but let me work a bit more slowly so that for a harder example, you would know what to do. And if you don't know what to do, I'll work slowly for this example. 
What I like to do sometimes is to take one of my examples like this one. I might even put a note that says I'm working on this example. And then go here and remind myself what each of these things is going to produce in the case of this example. Well, in the case of this example, first of WS would be 3, right? Because it's the first thing in that list. So that's going to be 3. And what's the total of the rest of WS going to be? Well, the rest of WS is cons 12 empty. So the total of that better be 12. And now I can say to myself, well, if this is 3 and this is 12, how am I supposed to put them together? What should the dots do in order to get me 15? Well, the fact that I wrote it this way makes it very clear. The dots really just have to be plus. Now I can run it to be sure that's right. And it is. That test passed. And now I'm going to go ahead and clean it up. I'm going to get rid of this 3. I'm going to get rid of this 12. I'm going to get rid of this extra space here. And I'm going to get rid of this arrow. And I'm going to save it and run it again. And both tests pass. So there you go. You have an example of having to represent arbitrary size data, arbitrary size information, so we need a self-referential type. Here's the self-referential type. There's a reference there, back to there. That's a self-reference. Given that self-reference, the template rules call us to put a note in here that there should end up being a natural recursion. And then, of course, when we get down to our actual function, the key thing is there is the natural recursion that we were expecting to see. And the key thing is, you know, we had to trust the recursion. So there was the natural recursion sitting there in the template. And we trusted it. We didn't mess with it. We didn't edit it. We just assumed it was going to produce 12 in that example, for example. Okay, And so this ends up having the same structure here of a natural recursion that we saw in the type comment and the template. So that's an example of designing a self-referential data definition and then designing a function to operate on that data.